How are you doing, math learners? This is your free access math teacher, Ash, and welcome to ML with Sir Ash. For today's lesson, we're going to discuss squares. In this video, you will learn the definition of the square as well as the properties of a square. In addition, in this video, you will also learn how to solve problems involving squares. But before anything else, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for you to be updated of these cool clear math videos just like this. Okay, math learners, welcome to another session here in Math Learning with Sir Ash. Today, we're going to discuss the most essential learning competency-based lesson for quarter 3 of the grade 9 mathematics, which is all about squares. The first question is, what is a square? Square is basically another special parallelogram in which all of its sides as well as all of its angles are congruent. In another definition, square is the fusion of the rhombus and the rectangle. Now, what are the properties of a square? Square basically has three properties, but it is a total of 11 properties. And what are these three properties? The first property is that since a square is a parallelogram, therefore, the six properties of a parallelogram occurs in squares, as well as all of the properties of the rhombus also occur in squares. Therefore, the three additional property of the rhombus is available in squares, as well as the two more properties of the rectangle is also available in squares, giving you a total of 11 properties. Now, if you want to know specifically what are those properties, you can view our previous videos on parallelograms, rectangles, and rhombus. But for you to understand even deeper in solving various problems involving squares, let us go to our discussion board. Okay, math learners, we are here now to our first given figure for squares. Now, we have here the figure 5 or FIVE where the diagonals intersect at point Q. These are the scenarios that we need to answer. If the line segment QI is equal to X plus 5 and FV is equal to X plus 25, what is the measurement of line segment IE? Now, my dear math learners, remember that in a square, the diagonals are congruent, the same as in the property of a rectangle. Therefore, we can say that FV, line segment FV, is equal to line segment IE. Now, if that is the case, then we can say that FV is X plus 25, as well as we could also give the expression X plus 25 for IE. However, we are owed to solve the actual measurement of this given figure. Now, since we have here QI or IQ as X plus 5, now, having two measurement of QI will give us the measurement of IE. So, therefore, we can have 2 times X plus 5. Get that, my dear math learners? Okay. So, for us to solve the value of X, we just need to simplify this equation, giving us 2X plus 10. So, by combining like terms and transposing the terms that are needed to be added, this will become 25 and this 10 here will be transposed, giving us minus 10. The 2x here will remain. And we will transpose the x here in the left side to the right side, giving us minus x. So we have the value 2x minus x, that is x. And 25 minus 10, that is 15. Therefore, the value of our x is 15. So since fv and ie are equal, so we can use our x value here in our expression for fv. So that is 15 plus 25. And our IE now is 40 units. Easy, right? Now, let us go to our second problem. If the measurement of angle FOI, sorry, this is Q. If the measurement of angle FQI is equal to 3X plus 9, FQI is 3X plus 9. So, this is the FQI. What are the values of X? the measurement of IQV and the measurement of IEV. Now, my dear math learners, since our 
given is in our diagonal. And remember, in the properties of a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular with each other, so as to squares. So therefore, angle Q here is 90 degrees. So we can equate 3x plus 9 to 90 degrees. And we can solve for the value of x. So we will transpose our 9, giving us 90 minus 9. So that is 3x is equal to 81. Divide both sides by 3. And x is equal to 27. So the answer for x is 27. Next question is, what is the measurement of IQV? IQV. So this is the one. Of course, this is still a perpendicular relationship. Therefore, this is 90 degrees. Easy, right? Now, how about IEV? IEV. Okay, so this is the one. My dear math learners, remember that this angle is 90 degrees. And one of the properties of a rhombus, which is also acquired by the squares is that each diagonal divides the opposite angles into two. So therefore, if we are owed to find for this one, of course, we just need to divide 90 by 2 and that is 45 degrees. So we have answered all of the problems in this given figure. Is it right? Now, let us go to our second figure. Okay, my dear math learners, we are down to our final figure and this is the square ABC where their diagonals intersect at point E. This has two scenarios, so we will try to solve the problems in these two scenarios. The first scenario is that if the line segment DB is 7x plus 1, so that is the diagonal, and the measurement of AE, this is the one, is equal to 2x plus 11, so half of the diagonal, what is the measurement of line segment EB? Okay, so my dear math learners, since this DB is equal to the diagonal, therefore, we can say that AE here is half as long as the given diagonal. So we can have DB is equal to twice the measurement of AE because 2AE will become AC. And AC and DB are congruent, right? Okay. So now let us try to substitute the given expression. So we have 7x plus 1 is equal to 2 times 2x plus 11. Now, by doing some algebra, we will have 4x plus 22. And transposing the terms in order for us to combine the like terms, we will have 7x minus 4x. I transpose the 4x. And we will have 22 minus 1, I transpose the positive 1 to the other side, giving us 3x is equal to 21, dividing both sides by 3. Therefore, our x is equal to 7. So therefore, since we already have the value of our x, we can now apply our value in this given expression. Why? Because AE is equal to EB. AE is equal to EB. Because they are both half of the diagonal. Easy, right? So now, we can have 2x plus 11. And we can substitute the value of our x, which is 7. So 2 times 7 plus 11. So that will give us 14 plus 11. And that is 25 units. Easy, right? Now, let us go to our second problem. If the measurement of angle DEC, DEC is 2A, Minus B, of course, this is perpendicular, so this is 90 degrees. And the measurement of angle ABC, ABC is A plus 2B, of course, this is also 90 degree angle. What are the value of A and B? Okay, so my dear math learners, we know that both of them is equal to 90 degrees. So technically speaking, we can say that 2A minus B is equal to A plus 2B. So we can equate the two expression and we will have this given scenario. So now let us try to combine like terms. So that is 2A minus A is equal to 2B plus B. I transpose my A to the other side giving me minus A. I transpose my minus B to the other side giving me plus B. So 2A minus A is A and 2B plus B that is 3B. 
So the question is, did we get the value of our given problem? Not yet, my dear math learners, because the value of our A is an expression, 3B. But we can use this given representation in our given expressions. So if we have 2A minus B, 2A minus B, we can substitute our A into 3B. So this is 90, right? So therefore, that is 2 times 3B minus B is equal to 90, giving us 6B minus B is equal to 90. 6B minus B, that is 5B is equal to 90. And if we divide both sides by 5, our B now is 18 units. So therefore, we have answered our first problem. Easy, right? Now, how about A? So since we already have our actual value for B, we can use that one to the other expression, and that is A plus 2B is equal to 90. So since, I'll just make a boundary here, okay? So since our B is 18, so we can have A plus 2 times 18 is equal to 90, okay? And then 2 times 18, that will give us 36. And we transpose our 36 to the other side. So A is equal to 90 minus 36. And 90 minus 36 is, of course, the answer for that is 54. So therefore, the value of our A is 54 units. So we have our value for A and we have also our value for B. And that solves our problem in this given figure. I hope, my dear math learners, you have learned a lot of things on solving various problems involving squares by applying the properties that you have learned. Now, this is the time that I will challenge you whether you have understood our topic and here it is. Okay, math learners, I hope you had a wonderful time in learning our topic for today. If you do have some questions, do not hesitate to put your inquiries in our comment section below. This is still your free access math teacher Ash. And always remember, it is fun to learn mathematics if we are together learning. Thank you so much, God bless, and keep safe always. Congratulations, math learners, for arriving to this part of the video. If you think that this video have helped you, click that like button. And if you think that this channel can change the way you see mathematics, do not forget to click that subscribe button and notification bell. Thank you.